All right, guys, Chatterbox Reviews, coming at you guys with my review for The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 10. All right, so another great episode, honestly, in my opinion, to kick off uh, season uh, the, the back half of Season 9 for The Walking Dead. Um, obviously, this episode, a very slow pace to this one. Um, nothing actually big happens really until the very last, you know, 30 seconds of the episode, uh, where we of course get the reveal of Alpha and some of the other whispers. Um, and so I, I, I did really enjoy it though, as a slower paced episode. Some may even refer to this as a bottle episode, if you will, because there really is only one location, uh, being used here. And even like just even, uh, more specific one location as in the jail cell being used in the majority of this episode. Um, and so in that case, I still really, really enjoyed this episode. Uh, so of course we'll go over a recap here, full, uh, kind of flesh everything out here. Uh, no pun intended there. Uh, and then we'll get to my, uh, rating fair character and then some more overall thoughts of the episode. And also then I'll talk about, uh, what we might see in the, with the whispers, uh, going forward here with the reveal of alpha. Um, and, uh, and we'll see, you know, how that, you know, scene between Daryl and, uh, and alpha there, uh, where they're, uh, where she wants her daughter back, right, as we uh, see at the end of the episode, we'll see how that plays out, so, anyways, guys, love to hear your thoughts of this episode, love to hear your thoughts so far of the, uh, of the two episodes, uh, so far in this back half of season nine, uh, are you liking it, are you liking the tone, the theme that they're building right now, are you liking the whispers introduction, love to hear your thoughts, uh, as always, so, uh, and then also, if you like the video, uh, please be sure to like the video, uh, and also consider subscribing to the channel, I uh, would really, really appreciate it. And, uh, of course, we'll be doing week-to-week -week reviews of The Walking Dead. Uh, love love the show, and uh, we'll be back every week. So, anyways, without any further ado, let's get into this one. So, a supreme focus on Lydia, Henry, Daryl. Uh, I would say probably those three, but mainly, chiefly, Lydia, right? And, uh, and so we get a lot of focus on her, and that is exactly where we begin this episode as well. So Lydia and Henry uh, continue talking in the cellar as we left off with them last episode, and we saw that Daryl was listening to them, uh, and we knew that that would probably play a big part uh, or an integral part uh, in this episode, right? And so we see them, uh, you know, talking back and forth, and then we also start off with a flashback to when Lydia uh, was a little girl 23 days into the apocalypse, and we can see that as it's uh, written on the wall there uh, where they're staying in that kind of basement bunker area there um and so anyways 23 days into the apocalypse with her mom as in alpha right uh so Terrell still sitting there listening to them the whole time as they talk uh and then they start to, of course talking about their mothers as we saw then lydia telling we we She's telling Henry, but we're seeing it through the images and the visuals of this flashback, right? So she's basically telling Henry about her mom and, and what she's done for her and all that stuff, right? Uh, and, of course, the two moms that they're talking about are Carol and Alpha, uh, which we haven't found out all, uh, you know, all about Alpha yet, but probably two of the biggest badass uh, women in the show right now um, in this world, if you even will. Uh, Mae Michonne, you, you could argue, but... Carol and Alpha, right? And so Lydia says uh, she hints at that her mom killing her dad. Um, and that was, you know, very, you know, very early on. And then, of course, we get a lot of more flashbacks explaining it all. Uh, but at this point, it was kind of hinted at in this flashback that the mom, you know, was able to take care of her. Uh, and in that, that she was able to, or sorry, that she killed her dad even to do that. Um, and she says uh, he was a stupid man and all this stuff, right? And then she says, uh, one of my favorite lines of the episode, to be honest, she says, she's a lot like your mom. You don't want to mess with her either. Uh, so I really did like that. And then we get the intro playing, of course. Uh, really do like the intro, by the way, this season. Uh, or at least for this back half, looks like they changed up a little bit. Got a, a couple new names in there, of course. Samantha Morton playing Alpha, um, and uh, and yeah. So it, it and uh, and I think um, uh, Ryan Hurst. I think Ryan Hurst is also in the title sequence now too. Uh, who will be playing Beta, uh, which hopefully we will be meeting in next episode. Uh, we'll have to see. But anyways, uh, yeah. So that's a really great uh, little uh, opening there. So then we see that uh, Tara and the others are uh, out to look for Alden and Luke, uh, which to me, this whole thing, this whole thing is just hilarious to me. Uh, I, I'm not sure if this is kind of, you know, a criticism, but it's just really funny to me. I got to point this out. So this is now, right? Tara and this group are now a search party that's looking for the search party who is looking for the missing people 
oh, who happened to be now in this new search party. So the whole way of this writing, you know what, I will be critical. This is lazy writing. Uh, I, I mean, the, the whole way to get Alden and Luke out there, okay, I, I get that. So now the people that they're looking for are now back in this search party, and now they're looking for the search party. It, it, the whole thing is just, I feel like they definitely could have came up with a better way, a more sensical way for them to still be out there, even though, and remember, Luke and Alden head out, and then I think it's within a couple hours that they all return back to the hilltop, and no one, you know, goes out to alert them. Nope, just two days later, they think they're missing, and they go and look for them again. It's like, you know, just to get people out of the hilltop and out of the gates, um... And, uh, I don't know. So that was my, you know, I really don't, uh, don't like that. But anyways, so, uh, you know, basically the moral of the story here is that they find their horses that have been cut open, they determine. And of course they were being eaten by the walkers there or the, the dead as they uh, now refer to them as the dead and the masked, uh, friends, I guess is what they uh, are categorizing them as right now. Uh, so this, I love this scene though. It was a great demonstration of this new challenge, right? Without being able to tell which one is which a walker or a whisper. Um, and, uh, of course, they haven't, you know, called the whispers yet, but, you know, it, it, it's a real challenge, right? And it's something that they've never faced before. And so I feel like this was uh, one of our, you know, biggest uh, demonstrations so far. Uh, maybe the last episode when they found uh, Lydia, but also this episode, too, uh, where you see that challenge uh, with them. And, of course, in this episode, or this scene, sorry, they all ended up being walkers. There were no whispers there, uh, but definitely they found out that the horses were cut open by whispers um, and killed. So they know that probably Luke and Alden were taken by people and that they're, you know, somewhere out there, right? And so anyways, so we go back to Henry and Lydia, uh, and then we get some more flashbacks uh, into Lydia's mother and father uh, at their camp there in the uh, basement bunker type of thing. Uh, then Henry spills the beans about Ezekiel and Carol and the kingdom and all this stuff. He starts telling her way too much, says, you know, that, you know, where he's from and, um, and he says it's about a day's ride from here and all that stuff. So giving away way too many details to someone he doesn't know at all. Um, and especially someone who could be a threat or their group could be a threat to them. Uh, and so at this point, Daryl has had enough, right? He swings open the doors. He goes down uh, to the uh, to the basement there, to the cells. He brings Henry up right away. Uh, and uh, it doesn't take Henry long to notice here. But so Daryl says, what the hell is wrong with you? Telling her about the kingdom. And then at this point, Henry, like... It takes him a little bit to, I, I love this, but anyways, he realizes, he's like, wait, you've been listening, right? Like, he, so uh, he fig finds out that, uh, that Daryl's been listening the whole time to their conversations, um, and that he's being used, in effect, right, to talk to Lydia and get details out of her, uh, while he didn't even know that, right? Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, Daryl admits to it, too, so they, they've been, uh, you know, shifting off listening to them talking, so, um, they definitely have been using him, right? Uh, so then Henry says she's a good person who got messed up out there, uh, and then he says, and she's right about you, you're an asshole. If you want answers, get them yourself. Uh, you know what? I'm not a big fan of Henry, and I don't like the way they're going with this, especially due to Carl being dead. They, they need this new, um, you know, uh, you know, kind of new boy for Lydia, if you will, uh, you know, a new love interest. But this episode, I actually liked Henry's role. I love this scene where he tells Daryl off. He has the balls to tell Daryl off and, uh, and call him an asshole and, uh, and call him what he's being in this scene. And then later on, really great scene of him confronting Daryl. So I will tell you, I've been very critical of Henry and the actor hasn't really grown on me, but this episode, I really did enjoy Henry's, uh, both the actor's performance and also Henry's character. So I got to give him that. Uh, so then we see, so Daryl takes that, right? He goes back down to get his own answers. So he goes down to question her a little bit more. Uh, she, uh, or sorry, then he asks if her mother would kill his people if they cross paths, right? If, if she found them, if she found Alan and Luke out there, would she kill them, right? Is that the type of person she is? Uh, and then it once again triggers those flashbacks uh, for Lydia. And this flashback is showing her mom killing that guy uh, who uh, basically tried to get out of that basement bunker uh, they were held up in. 
and trying to, you know, draw attention to themselves uh, down there while the guard, it looked like, or the military up above uh, would not have had a clue that they were down there. And obviously they were losing the battle up there too. And so she basically did what she had to right after this and killing this guy, uh, although unintentionally it looked like a little bit, but still suffocating him to death, right? And so then we get the impression it's like, pretty sure she would, right? We see this flashback, uh, and uh, I don't think she, of course, tells Daryl what happened, uh, but obviously we can see that Alpha, yeah, her mom probably would have been, uh, you know, would have been the one, um, you know, to, w would be the one to kill them. Uh, so then Daryl offers her uh, pills for her ear as she keeps grabbing it. She has some pain in her ear, um, and then gets her a drink of water, and then she tries to attack him, of course, right? So she tries to attack him through the bars. Uh, once she, once he gets that spoon close enough to her, I guess she kind of tries to get a hold of it and stab him or something. Of course, it doesn't work, right? <laughs> and of course, uh, Daryl then, uh, you know, holds her back a little bit. And he also holds her arm and uncovers her sleeve there uh, where it's full of scars and bruises. It looks like her, her arm there. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously that will come back later. And that's a big thing that Daryl did discovers there as well and Lydia obviously a little self-conscious of that as well uh and uh you know this girl just not helping her own cause that's what I thought in this scene you know trying to attack Daryl after all that really right and uh, of course it doesn't work anyways so we get a lot, of course, Daryl and Lydia, right? That's going to be the, the majority of the recap. So Daryl comes back again the next day, right? Hints at that Lydia got beat by her father, uh, but says the only part of her story that sounded genuine was that he sang to her when she was scared. So not everything is adding up here, right? So she has the, the bruises on her arm and, you know, Daryl's talking about, you know, uh, you know, dads who, who beat their children and that stuff. Very powerful, uh, theme, by the way, in this, uh, in these couple of sequences here, um, with the, um, you know, child abuse and, and, and that kind of theme. But, um, anyway, so he's saying that story doesn't add up here, right? So in your one flashbacks, uh, your, your flashback story here, your dad seemed genuine and seemed like he sang to you when you when you were scared, um, but it sounded also like he was the one who beat you up a little bit. Uh, and so then Lydia says that her mom gave her the scars as her dad died, right? So her dad is dead. Uh, her dad is dead at this point, obviously. Uh, and it was Alpha, or her mom, who gave her the scars. And Daryl asks where she is, and Lydia, be glad you don't know. Love that uh, line there as well. And uh, then he says, why are you protecting her? You're safer here, right? He's saying, she she's beating you, right? Why would you want to protect her while you're safer here? We'll keep you safe and tell us where she is, right? Uh, but then uh, she says, this place isn't real. The world changed and you're all acting like it's going to change back. So still reinforcing that disbelief in walls and a community and all that stuff as she's pretty much been indoctrinated into by her mother and the rest of the whispers, um, you know, group there. Right. Uh, so then Daryl says that her mom beating her out of love for her is bullshit. Right. Um, you know, her mom can't possibly be beating her and, and, uh, you know, and hurting her in, in the name of kind of love for her. Right. And, uh, and so he doesn't kind of, you know, get that. He doesn't get that concept. And so Lydia replies, when you stay soft, people die. And again, you just see how her, and I think she genuinely believes this stuff, right? And it's just the way she's been brought up in this community of, of the whispers and her mom, uh, being this way. So cutthroat and ruthless that she actually believes this stuff. And you see how, especially with Lydia here, you can see how much, that upbringing in this apocalypse, especially her upbringing, can really influence the way she sees the world as she's grown up. Um, and this is something that could have happened to Carl, but Rick was able to kind of hold her, uh, hold him back from that and uh, and strive for community and trying to get it back to the way it was. Uh, well, Alpha totally embraced this new world as, uh, as Lydia's mom. So you really see the stark difference here, and that's why, again, it would have been so great to see Carl with Lydia, but now we get Henry instead. So we see a flashback to her dad dying uh, by defending her as that man reanimated from before the, the man that uh, her mom killed. She says that he was soft and that was the reason that he died. Again, it, it sounds exactly like her mom was the one to tell her that, right? Um, so then she tells Daryl that he doesn't fit in as he's hard and the rest of the people here are soft. And again, I mean, that is true, right? Uh, you know, I, I feel like that's true. And she's picked up on that pretty early on. Um, and then uh, she says, you know, tell me what happened to you, right? Why are you so hard like this? And why are you living in this community? 
and Daryl just doesn't have it. He just walks away from her, um, and it seems as though she kind of triggers something in him as well. Um, and then we see that Henry kind of intercepts him before he goes back into the house there after he comes out from the bunker. Uh, and he also uh, pleads Daryl then to show her that there's nothing to be afraid of here at the hilltop anymore and that she's just scared. That's the only reason that she's not opening up to him about it. Uh, and so Daryl tells him that it's not just him that can do that, right? He's basically telling Henry... You can do that too, right? I, it's not just me that can that can uh, show her that you know she's not scared and whatever. Um, and so, of course, Henry then goes back in, right? So we get this whole narrative throughout the episode is that you know Daryl and Henry kind of different approaches, and it ends up that Henry's approach is much better, and he actually is able to uh, kind of get Lydia to open up, right? So uh, then we see a little bit of break in the action here where Magna, Yumiko, and the others. I didn't get their names. I, I yeah, I, I meant to get their names, but I know Angel Theory is the one, uh, is the uh, one who plays um, kind of the interpreter, I guess, if you will, um, for uh, for the uh, woman who's deaf. Um, and I, I still, I feel like we get their names, but I just, I totally forget. So anyways, uh, so they will say the others, the, the, the other two there, uh, sneak out in the middle of the night at the hilltop, uh, so, cause they want to search for Luke. They want to, you know, be the ones to save him and then the ones to find him, of course. But this is of course, after Tara called them off and said that we're going to, you know, stay in for, for the night and then, you know, make up a plan. Turns out she was right, right? So quickly they find out that there's too many walkers out there in the forest and it's not safe and they decide just to go home. We'll think about it overnight. We'll get a plan and then we'll head out in the morning as, um, as they're a little bit more ready, right? Um, so then the one, the, the, the one, uh, you know, starts making the case of, uh, or the interpreter, I guess, starts making the case to stay out and, and look for Luke, right? And, you know, and, uh, you know, she says she's very invested, you know, in Luke and that, um, you know, they deserve to, to be out there and still keep looking for him. Uh, and, uh, and then of course she wants to, you know, stay with the, the, the deaf woman as well. Um, and, uh, so, so they want to stay out there. They're arguing that they, you know, that they, they have feelings and that, you know, they're very emotional in this scene too. And that they want to stay out and look for Luke. So Magna and Yumiko just head back without them. They just leave them out there. Just the two of them. It's like, that is literally the stupidest decision. I mean, honestly, I'm sitting here, I'm like, what the hell are they thinking? Right? And I mean, you know, nothing did happen to them. We are at least the one, uh, maybe, uh, still dead as she's, um, you know, found outside of the walls at the very end. But anyways, um, or stuck outside of the walls, but like, what the hell is this? I mean, why would Magda and Yubiko just head back to the hilltop and leave these two out there? Well, they're surrounded by walkers. They know all these walkers are in the forest. And then we see as well, uh, as the camera switches, that the Whisperers are right there watching them. So, a really, really stupid uh, decision here by Magna and Yumiko. I don't know if I can blame it on the writing, because I feel like they're trying to make it a little bit authentic here. But this was just dumb. <laughs> like, this is just dumb. And this shows exactly... I mean, the question is, how do they survive this long if that's the type of stuff they do? It's a good question. So, anyways, uh, we know that they're not quite as conditioned as our survivors, that's for sure. Uh, so then... Back to the cell. So Henry goes down to the cell and decides to let Lydia out. Whew, wow. Uh, you know what? Luckily, nothing happened. But, I mean, such a stupid decision, right? Of course, without Daryl's permission. Yeah, he goes down and lets her out. Uh, so he, uh, you know, takes her basically uh, up to the to the ground, to the surface, with him to show her uh, how the community is and how they live. Um, because she, you know, obviously is having a, a very different belief of how things are going. Um and then meanwhile, a few minutes after they get out, uh, Leah uh, begins uh, finding worms from the garden and starting eating them whole. So it's like, you know, Henry's trying to show her the way in the community. And all of a sudden, she, you know, right away, she's just eating worms. So we see her, her kind of background here play out. Uh, then Henry uh, takes one and eats it from her. Um, and, you know, he's like, I just ate a worm, right? And uh, so that was actually a cool little sequence there. Then they go out and basically uh, start taking a look. They, you know, start on a little bit of a tour there. Uh, and then Lydia starts reaching for a hammer on the table. Um... You knew that was coming, right? But just before she's able to do something, a mother comes out with her baby crying. And this, this, you know, crying for the baby triggers flashbacks again for Lydia. Uh, and we get the impression that she's quite troubled due to her childhood. And of course, that baby crying probably, you know, triggered these really bad memories for her. Um, 
and almost right away she asks Henry to go back to the cell um, as she's you know in tears at this point um, so we see right that 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 fact that it's triggering those really bad memories and those bad experiences from her childhood and so then they get back uh, you know to the cell and then she asks him if he could stay with her tonight in the cell and so they lie down together right split uh, you know side by side through the bars um, and they hold hands that was an awesome part. Uh, they're playing pretty close to the comic books at this point with Carl and Lydia's relationship here. That was pretty great. I gotta admit, that, that, was, a, that was a pretty awesome moment there where they held hands. So, next day we finally get the truth of everything, right? So, next day Lydia finally came clean with Daryl. So, she tells Daryl that nobody will come looking for her and that's just not the way they operate. Um, and then uh, she was told to get information about them and report back to them. That's, she said, that was their kind of objective. And so then Henry raises the question, and she's the leader's daughter, you know, wouldn't they come looking for you, right? It's like, yeah, that would make sense. Uh, but she still claims no. She still, she still claims that, uh, you know, that, that no one is going to come look for her. Um, and then Daryl says, what about our missing people? Lydia says, if my mom found them, I can't think of a reason she'd keep them alive. Sorry. And that's one of the first times that she's actually, you know, apologized and, and acknowledged uh, something. So... Yeah, that was great to see. So she says, sorry. So then she uh, says where their camp is, but they never stay in one place anyways. So to find a camp for the Whisperers is pretty useless. Um, it's definitely not like the Sanctuary or Hilltop or any of these other communities where a vast amount of people live. The Whisperers don't really live in a camp, right? Uh, so then Henry asks her if any of her childhood story was true. Any of the stuff she's been telling them hasn't been true. And she says, I thought it was, but I had it all mixed up. It was a lie. My mom told me over and over for years, but deep down, I knew what she was and I knew what she did. So then we get the real story play out. And the real story is that her mom was the one who killed her father. Her father did not die defending her from the walker. Uh, her mom actually ruthlessly slit his throat um, there in the bunker, um, and he was the one who actually cared for her, not the mom, as we saw before, it was the dad who was sympathetic, um, and, uh, and a good parent, a good figure for her, um, and the mom took him out, she killed him, so, um, the alpha, right, so, uh, that's who she really is, right, that's who alpha and her mom actually is, not all the flashbacks before, but that's what she was tricked into thinking all this time, uh, but now she's kind of being able to reflect, and know that that, no, that was a lie. Uh, so then she says, I'm sorry I wasted your time, right? As she's basically lied the whole time up until now. And now, not really any satisfying answers coming from her anyways. Um, and Daryl says, you didn't. You didn't waste our time. Um, and I really do feel like Daryl, not a father figure, but he's definitely feeling for Lydia uh, throughout this episode. And I really did like that. So showing some emotion from Daryl. Uh, rather than just the odd grunt every once in a while when Rick calls his name, uh, right? That's what we've been uh, been used to. So then Yumiko talks to Tara about them sneaking out, uh, and she looks over right uh, down from the uh, walls of the hilltop there, and uh, she sees the uh, their two friends right coming back. Um, returning with the kingdom guards as Tara uh, tells her um, that you know to just talk to her next time. She doesn't know if she's doing the right thing here, right? And so then. If they talked to her, she may have let them out anyways. And so, of course, uh, they're lucky, though, that the Kingdom Guards were able to go out and find them um, and uh, and bring them back safely. So, everything seems to be going just well. Everything's all good, and it looks like they're safe. They're bringing back the, uh, the their friends. But then, but then, this was one of my, this is such an iconic thing, I think, that's going to live on for The Walking Dead, is that walkers start walking towards the gates or shall we say the whispers? Really awesome stuff here. To see these walkers walking at a normal pace, it's just an insane thing. I don't think we'll ever really get used to it, even after the whispers are, are gone. I really don't think we're going to get used to it. Um, so anyways, then Tara calls everybody, including Daryl, to the, to the fence there, right, to look at what's happening. And then we see that Alpha leads her group. Uh, we see the Infinity Belt Buckle, of course, from the comics. That'll be a big thing. That's kind of the symbol, right, for Alpha. Um, and then we guess we basically get the teaser scene that we've seen in all the trailers and the teasers as Alpha is kind of uh, putting her hand on, them, on their shoulders, making her way up to the front of the crowd. And then something that we haven't seen before is that she stands at the front, front and 
center looking right at Tara and Daryl up on the gate. And she says, I am Alpha, and we only want one thing from you, my daughter. Really great to end of the episode here. Um, I don't know, for some, maybe this was a reveal that Lydia was her daughter. Uh, but, of course, through the flashbacks, we already knew that uh, Alpha was indeed her daughter. So, anyways, a really great ending to it. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'll talk about the look of Alpha um, just in a, a couple moments here uh, for my rating. Alright, so in terms of rating for this episode, I'm going to give it a 4.6 out of 5. Um, so this is, a, a you know, literally a tick down from last episode. I really did like the last episode as a mid-season premiere episode. I feel like as a normal episode, it would have lacked, uh, you know, a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of substance. But, you know, for, for a way of a premiere to set up the rest of the season, it was really great in that, uh, that aspect. So... The first thing I want to tackle here is Alpha. So I know a lot of you are talking about this, Samantha Morton. Um, so my idea of this or my thoughts on this right now are Samantha Morton is a very good actress. I, I think that she is a really good actress. Um, she has had some things. Was she on Downtown Abbey or or the, the Crown or one of those shows that she was on? Uh, of course, she is British. Um, and so she was on one of those shows and she's been a, you know, a, uh, you know, I, I would say established actress, right? I think she's a good actress. I just don't think that, look, you know, kind of looking back on the casting announcement and, and now seeing her, I don't think she was the right choice for Alpha. But again, it's very early to say right now. Um, but again, it, like you look at the comic books, Alpha's supposed to be kind of tall, skinny, uh, and she really doesn't look the part. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the way she looks in the TV series. It's just simply comparing the comic book to the TV series it looks a lot different, or she does. She looks a lot different from the uh, comic book counterpart. So, and that's always that's always happened in Walking Dead, right? I mean, Negan looked pretty similar, I guess. Um, and and Jeffrey Dean Morgan was probably the best casting that you could have got. I mean, looking back on it, he's an amazing actor, uh, and and fits well in the role. So, anyways, that's something that that is gonna be talked about by a lot of comic book fans that uh, she doesn't really look the part. Um, but you know what? We'll have to see. What we'll have to see. I think she's a good actress. I don't know that this was the best role for her, though. So we'll have to see going forward how that turns out. But anyways, back to the episode. So we really, uh, really got a lot of flashbacks in this one, and I really liked them. I really love flashbacks uh, in any TV show, especially The Walking Dead. The flashbacks that we've gotten, I mean, just in this season, you want to talk about the Rick episode, right? Amazing. Um, and so it really would have been dull without them. I felt like the story of Lydia, you know, Daryl, Henry, down in the cell, would have been really boring if it was just Lydia telling lies and then eventually she comes clean. The flashbacks were so impactful, um, and especially the way in which it was all set up as a lie, and at the very end, we saw the real story play out, and of course, uh, you know, reinforcing this idea of how these child the uh, childhood can be manipulated by the parents, and how Lydia's upbringing has been kind of totally diluted, but now she's looking back and reflecting on it and realizing the truth of that. Um, and so some really deep themes, by the way, as I mentioned before, the child abuse stuff as well, um, some deep themes surrounding this episode, and also with Daryl into his past a little bit too. We know quite a bit of his past and, and that he had a troubled uh, upbringing, of course, with his brother Merle um, and, and and all that stuff. So we know that the, he's kind of, you know, can, can uh, kind of relate to Lydia um, in this way as well. Uh, so I also love the focus on Henry and Lydia this episode. Um, like I said at the beginning, up until this episode, I really disliked Henry. I didn't like the actor. I didn't like what he was bringing to the role. But honestly, after this episode, I'm on board. I, I love this Henry character that they're going with now um, with Lydia. And the actor gave a great performance this week. So, you know what? I got to give credit where credit's due. And uh, Henry was really great. And the dynamic between the two were really great. That scene where, uh, you know, she's eating the worms, then he eats a worm. One of my favorite scenes, uh, probably of season nine so far. It was such a, uh, a great scene to see. And I felt like it was uh, it was very kind of organic. That's a big thing with the, the scenes in this episode. It didn't seem forced between the two. It was very gradual. When they held hands, it didn't seem really, really forced. It seemed like that was organic and that would happen. Um, so again, really did enjoy uh, the Lydia and Henry dynamic for sure. Um, Great dialogue throughout this episode, too. Uh, you know, not just talking about Lydia, uh, but also the dialogue between Henry and Daryl, some of those scenes, uh, Tara's scenes, Magna's uh, group uh, scenes there. So, yeah, I mean, really, uh, really great stuff here. Um, and then lastly, 
couple of criticisms. So the well, no Negan, <laughs> no Negan is always a criticism, uh, especially after what we saw of him last episode. I saw that some people didn't like that. I love that uh, sequence there with Negan. I'm um, going back to the sanctuary. I thought that was a really integral part of the episode, and also something that means a lot going forward. Um, so no Negan, obviously that's a negative, but there's just such a, and, and they're continuing this again with season nine, or at least so far since Rick has been gone with these communities separating again, we've gotten more and more of these bottle episodes. And you know what? I, I mean, there's a whole argument on what's a bottle episode and all that. But what I mean by that is, you know, basically secluded episodes where you're in one location focusing on, a, you know, one group of characters. Um, and with that, with this kind of breakup of the communities again, that's what we're getting. And that's what I felt like was the biggest weakness of season seven. So to me, that was a little tough. And I felt like last episode did it better. And they showed Negan at the Alexandria. They showed some of the Alexandrians. Um, they show the hilltop. But we still haven't seen the kingdom since, what, episode 7 or something like that? Episode 7 um, of, uh, of season 9? Or was it even episode 7? Or wait, was it episode 6 or something? So, you know, I just, it's unfortunate. And we haven't seen Ezekiel again since that episode. So, and he's a big character. We haven't seen Carol in a couple episodes. So, that is kind of a worry of mine so far. And uh, I feel like they're kind of going down the wrong path with that one. But, hopefully the uh, groups will reunite, of course, for this fair that's coming up at the end of the season. To kind of, uh, you know, obviously converge on the Whispers. And, uh, you know, decide on what to do with them. So, that would be my biggest criticism thus far. Uh, the teaser for next episode looks like a lot of focus on the kingdom. Jerry, Ezekiel, Carol, um, you know, some flashbacks in there as well. So, yeah, really looks great there. Fair character, Daryl uh, Daryl Dixon, obviously. <laughs> Norman Reedus uh, playing him. I was thinking of going with Lydia, but, you know, I got I to gotta highlight Daryl. Um, like I said, I mean, this episode is one of the first, well, maybe when uh, we met him with his dog. But this is one of the first episodes, um, you know, it, not oh sorry not even one of the I would say one of the first of this half but I guess yeah last half we got lots of this uh, but this is another episode just demonstrating how Daryl got passed over you know skipped over whichever you want to use um, in season seven and eight and it's really unfortunate I mean don't get me wrong he had some badass little uh, sequences but he really has never had this amount of dialogue this amount of um, charisma, um, you know, dialogue, meaningful dialogue, like, this is just another level for Daryl and Norman Reedus, and, uh, you know, if he's taking on Rick's role, as it looks like, I'm all for it, if they're gonna keep giving him this material, so, um, really like Daryl in this episode, a lot of deeper stuff with him in this episode, um, and, uh, an emotional part as well, and we, again, we haven't seen that a lot, so, there you go, Norman Reedus doing an amazing job, of course, the new lead of The Walking Dead, um, and, uh, and yeah, I mean, he definitely deserves it, he's doing a great job, uh, he's also got Ryan right Norman Reedus on too right now, so, uh, so there you go, but anyways, guys, that'll just about wrap it up, uh, for this review, uh, slash recap of The Walking Dead, season 9, episode 10, Omega, uh, next episode, like I said, seeing the teasers, it looks pretty good, uh, looks like a lot of kingdom focus, so I'm looking forward to it, uh, and that one is called Bounty, so, anyways, guys, uh, we'll see you then next week for, uh, The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 11, thank you guys so much for watching this one, thank you so much for your support on the channel, do really appreciate it, as always, and again, guys, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. The devil has come to carry me home, lay me at the bottom, the bottom of the river.